pray that you would decrease us and that you would increase in us. Father God, we pray that the word would not go and return void, but through the ministering of the word, that one might come running saying, what must I do too in order to be saved? Now, Father God, continue to rest and rule upon our shoulders. We pray over our sick and our shut in. We pray over those that don't know you today in the pardon of their sins. Father God, bless those that are joining us by way of the internet. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable unto you. Father, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Why don't you just tell your neighbor that I'm free? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And all you have to do is believe that. Start walking in your freedom, even if it looks like you're not free. But you can do it by the grace of God. Amen, amen, amen. We just thank God for our music ministry and our audio and our video and our urshers and everybody that makes this ministry what it is. There's a word from the Lord found in 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter, verses 6 through 9. 1 Samuel 18, verse 6 through 9. And this morning, we're going to talk about something that everybody knows something about, or everybody been a participant of, or somebody is participating against you right now. It's amazing how folk can love you one day and hate you the next day. My God. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about haters for a little while. Amen, amen, amen. We are either a hater or we are being hated on. And had you noticed, you don't have to do nothing to folk for them to hate you. Amen. You have the scripture? All right. Uh, reading from 1 Samuel 18, and that sixth verse says, And it came to pass, as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul with music, or tambourines, with joy, and with instruments of music. The seven verse says, and the women answered one another as they played, and said, Saul had slain his thousands and David his 10,000. And Saul was very raw. In other words, he got mad. He started hating. And the saying displeased him. As he said, they have ascribed unto David 10,000, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom. And Saul eyed David from that day forward. We want to talk about haters on the day. And I want to tell you, don't let your haters get you down. Your hater don't really want what you have. They just want to hate on what you have. They just don't think that you good enough to have that good looking brother. They don't think you good enough to have that good looking sister. So they hate on you and they begin to talk about you. Notice how easy it was for Saul to turn against David. So what make you think cause that's your homeboy or that's your homegirl, that's your relative, that they won't turn against you? Now, these brothers had been out to battle together. They had been fighting together. You said, well, we, we long term. We run the clubs together. We run women. We run men together. Everything we do together, they would never stab me in my back. But these brothers had been out on the battlefield fighting 
for the Lord, and yet feelings came into play. Tell your neighbor, you got to watch folks' feelings. Folk talk a good game. They talk a good game, but they begin to hate because their feelings are hurt. And so in this passage of Scripture, what happened was King Saul was all right. He knew he didn't slain but a thousand. He was all right. But the problem was is that the women began to call him out. Folk don't like to be called out, especially when we think we more than what we are. My God, my God, my God. All of us have somebody that doesn't like us or just hate on us because of who we are and what we have accomplished in this lifetime. Somebody in here, you want your PhD, so you hate on the one that's got it. You've been going to school for 10 years, and you're just now getting your associate. And when somebody go and get their doctorate, you uh, began to hate on them. Paul reminds us in Romans 7 and 21 and 24, uh, Paul says, I find then a law. That when I would do good, am I talking to anybody in here? That evil presents itself to me. What Paul is saying, Paul is saying that I'm in such a condition and my state of mind is under the power of the habits and sinful propensities that when I would do good, when, when my will and my reasons are strongly bent on obedience, I find a law that causes me to be in opposition of obedience and uh, to pick up the principle of sin. So he says evil begins to be present with me. He says my will to do good is in my spirit. But the principle of rebellion is present with me and it excites me to sin. Then he turns around and he says, for I delight in the law of God. In other words, I get happy in the law of God after the inward man. In other words, he's saying the inward man is in good shape. But the outward man, I can't control. My flesh just seems to rise. And my feelings and my hurt is all locked down in my flesh. He says the inward man represents the regeneration of my soul. So I find joy. I find, tell your neighbor, I find joy. I find joy in that life. Then in the 23rd verse, he said, but. And I tell you, anytime you see a but, something is about to happen. But, but, I see another law in my members. Why warring against the law of my mind? And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. In other words, what he says is, the warring of my members are causing unnecessary assaults to my soul. It's attacking my soul, it's harassing my soul, it's battering my soul, and it's storming my spirit. My God. He said what happens is, by all of these assaults, they reduce me to an extreme misery. So he said, I can see it, and, and, and that's nothing new to us. Sometimes we even hate on our own self. The inner man hating on the outer man. The outer man hating on the inner man. Uh, that that I would do, I do not, but that that I ought not do, I find myself doing. That's just warring against one another. Sometimes you don't need nobody to hate on you. You're doing a pretty good job of it yourself. So in the 21st verse, he began to recognize, and can I tell you, you got to recognize what you are, not what you think you are. Got to tell you that again. You got to recognize what you are, not what you think you are. So he says in the 21st, 24th verse, he says, oh, wretched man that I am. 
In other words, he realized he said, I'm wounded. Somebody in here, you wounded, but you don't want to recognize that you've been wounded. And because you won't recognize it, help won't come your way. The Lord said, you got to admit what you are. If you're an alcoholic and you go to Alcoholic Anonymous, they can't help you until you admit that you're an alcoholic. I wish I had somebody in here. If you're a dopehead, unless you go and say, I've been messed up and I realize I'm messed up from the flow up, they can't help you. So Paul says right here, for I know that I have been wounded. My God, my God. Quit acting like you so strong that you can handle every win and every doctrine that comes your way. Haters like to send you in the wrong direction and you go because you think you are strong enough. So he said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of death? He says, not only have I been wounded, but I've been afflicted. I've been dejected. Am I talking to somebody? I've been distressed in my body and in my mind. And what has happened is I have become a prisoner to my haters. Somebody say, I need deliverance. I need deliverance. See, you got to realize that haters are going to hate. That's their personality. That's their meaning in life. Meaning that people just not going to like you or like your will and they find a reason to dislike you. I don't like her because she got some long hair this week and it was short on last week. I don't like him because he tried to walk and act like he's the cleanest dressed person in the church. Folk will find a reason to start hating on you. Get a new car and I've been wanting a new car. I'm going to hate on you. Get a new house and I've been trying to get one. I already know my beacon score is not high enough, but I'll hate on your blessing. Haters, 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 haters. Not anything that you have done. They just don't like you. Because you got a little Bible locked up in you, they don't like you. Because you are anointed with the Holy Ghost, they don't like you. It don't take all of that for you to get your point across. Maybe they just don't like the way you wear in your hair. They don't like you. They begin to talk about you. In other words, what a hater does, a hater appoints themselves to you. The way that God appoints an angel to us, a hater appoints themselves. See, I'm going to hate on Pastor Pyle, so I have appointed myself that every day I'm going to hate on Pyle. I've got to tear down his integrity. Oh, God. What a hater is, a hater is a person that simply cannot be happy for another person's success. Why he got to get that job and I've been trying to get a good job. So rather than be happy, what the hater does is make a point of exposing the flaws that are in a person. Now, we all got some issues that need correcting. But the hater forgets that they in worse shape than you. And so what the hater does, after the hater can't bring you down mentally, the hater begins to try and talk you down. And so what the hater does is look beyond where you are and find a fault. Uh, mess up a word. Uh, don't cross a T in the right direction and you got a doctor's degree, the hater will begin to talk about you. Use some broken English and you got 14 years of schooling, the hater will begin to talk about you. Mess up somebody's hair and you a beautician, the hater will begin to talk about your hairdo, but yet they cannot create a hairdo. I wish I had somebody. You take some colors and put them together and they look good on you, but because they won't look good on the hater, the hater began to talk about you don't know how to colorize with accessories. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. What I want us to understand 
is that hating on someone is the direct result of being a hater. It don't mean that you're jealous of them. You just don't like the fact that they being blessed. Why God got to bless them on minimum wage and won't bless me with my $25. I'm suffering making 25 and they having joy in their camp on minimum wage and they'll begin to hate on you. They'll talk about, I wouldn't work a job like that that only pays me minimum wage, but they don't understand that if you stay with the little bit, that God say, I'll increase and make it much and God can take $7.50 an hour and pour it back in to $15 an hour and you live it on $7.50, but God got you working with $15. I wish I had some God. So the hater, the hater is not just jealous, they just hate him. It's just a seed in them that been planted in them. You know, uh, just like it is when you don't like folk, when the other folk don't like us, and uh, it's just planted from generation to generation. And see, normally, the hater don't want to be you. They just don't like the person that you are. And so the haters say, I got to knock you down a notch. You ever notice that's all they want to do? The hater never said nothing good about you. The hater just want to knock you down. The hater want to see you miserable like them. Let my wife leave me. I'm going to start hating on your wife. Oh, Y'all don't want to talk to me. Let your husband leave you. Watch your girlfriend start. Watch you start hating on your girlfriend's husband. And they were doing all right, but when they got that hating spirit in them, they took it out of your house and they brought it to their house. But John 13, 34 and 35, Jesus says, a new commandment I give you, that you got to learn how to love one another. He said, as I have loved you, so since I love you right in the middle of your distortion, right in the middle of your mess, right in the middle of your blessings, because I love you, then you are to love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. Now, it's a great mystery to me. I'm going to get into church here for just a minute. Uh, how the people with Jesus in their heart can so easily hate and hurt others in the ministry. How people with Jesus in their heart become so impatient, become angry with one another, and so intolerant with someone that we have characterized as being our friend. If we are friends with the Lord, we ought to be friends with our enemies. Do I need to tell you that again? The Bible said, love your enemies, love those who despitefully use you. But I've been living long enough to witness people in the church that go out of their way to utterly destroy God's children. You got some folk that come to church with hell in them. They come with the intention of killing the ministry. You got folk that don't like the preacher but come in and eye him down as he minister. And if it's a weak preacher, he'll give in to you. You got folk that their job is to talk down the blessings that the church has bestowed upon the man of God. And rightfully so because the church ought to take care of the man of God. I wish I had somebody. And when folks start talking about what you ought not do, you ought to tell them, but the Lord said that he ought not want for nothing because a good shepherd is worthy of double honor. Do I have somebody in here? But we got folks, they are utterly out to destroy God's children. You got folk that are on the prayer line that's out to destroy the altar ministry. What do you mean, brother preacher? When your prayer don't line up with the life that you live and you stand before the body and you lay your dirty hands on dirty folk, they will never become whole. Ah. You are utterly out. 
out to destroy the prayer ministry of the church. You got folk that are in the choir that hate the choir that cannot sing but they are there as a figment so that they can try and destroy the ministry of music. Ah. You always got somebody that's a better singer in the pew than the choir. That's a better musician in the pew than the choir. That's a better preacher in the pew than the poor pit. That's a better usher in the pew than on the usher corner. We, we just got a lot of hate working up in us. I've seen Christians hurt. Seen Christians being criticized. Seeing Christians being gossiped. And then I see Christians judging one another while sitting in the sanctuary that belongs to God. Not only that, but I've seen uh, folk being uh, criticized from behind the pulpit. But in Isaiah 6 and 1, Isaiah said, I saw also the Lord. He was sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Here is the Lord, the creator of the universe, sitting upon his supreme and his throne in his temple, high and lifted up as the Bible said. And here we are in his temple, the church of God, and we're putting down his children and we're looking down on them. We are checking them. We always want to check somebody. We always want to rebuke somebody. And yet when we're rebuked, we take it way out of condition and they want to rebuke them in the very presence of the almighty what's wrong haters are all through the body of Christ that's why we got religious folk or saved folk sitting at home on Sundays because the haters in the church that's my seat the haters in the church won't move over so they can get through. The haters in the church don't know how to follow direction. The haters in the church want to always be the first and want to be glorified. I wish I had somebody. The haters in the church. What happens here? We insist on hating each other for no good reason when we are essentially on the same team. We already have the devil that utterly hates each and every one of us. Sometimes I think some of us want to inadvertently switch and join up with the devil so that we'll feel free to hate on our neighbor. But in the text, we join in on the celebration of David's victory of defeating the Philistine giant called Goliath. I want you to understand something, that God used David to defeat the Philistine. And if you were an Israelite, regardless of your position or your stature, you should have been a part of this celebration. Have you ever noticed that haters never want to celebrate when celebration is called for? But they're always right in the midst of mess that's uncalled for. And so the Israelites should have been happy that David had slain their problem. You got to understand that the Philistine was a big problem. And everybody that went up against the Philistine eventually were killed off. But yet, here God looked beyond where he normally called for. And he began to go into the house of Jesse. And in that house of Jesse, I believe Jesse had maybe eight or nine sons. And uh, they began to go to the top. You got to understand kingdom work that God always starts with the eldest. Maybe the eldest is not totally qualified, but God has a way of starting with the eldest. 
And so as they brought him before the Lord, and the Lord kept saying, no, that's not the one. No, that's not the one. And you got to be careful when the Lord began to take the younger and not the oldest. You got to be careful not to develop some hate. Now what happened, David wasn't even qualified to be a giant killer, but when you learn to lean and depend on the Lord, you understand that I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. So the Bible says that God had a special anointing on David. You got to know that when God placed a special anointing in your life, that folk are going to hate on you because they don't understand how you're able to do what you are doing. Have you ever noticed that you sung real good in the shower and you had such a nervousness about yourself when you came out in public, but when you stop hating on yourself saying, I cannot do this, then God has an opportunity to blow his wisdom and his strength in you. And after God began to mold and make us over again, we become qualified to be a worthy vessel for the Lord. And so that's what God did when he chose David, who was just a little shepherd. He had to remind David that you've already done some great things, but this is about the biggest uh, obstacle uh, that I need tackled at this time. And David, the reason why they haven't been able to take Goliath down is because everybody was doing it on their own. And so what God does is take the little bit and create a lot out of it. God says, sometime I've got to let you hit against the wall for you to understand that you don't have to come out fighting. All you have to do is come out praying. God says, sometime I've got to put a load on your shoulder that you cannot manage to make it work on your own because now you'll learn how to call upon me. And the Bible said that you can call upon the name of the Lord and you shall get an answer. And so what happened was God had put his mercy and his grace and he had installed it in David's life. And so when they went out to battle the army, the Lord made sure that David had what he needed. Can I tell somebody the problem is we lose the battle because we are not equipped with what God said we needed. Somebody said I needed a Uzi to go out to battle. But I heard the Lord said to David, you don't need a spear. You don't need a gun. All you need is five smooth stones. Do I have somebody? Sometimes you're trying to figure out what God is doing. You're trying to figure out how God is going to do it. So I heard the Lord say, if you submit yourself, unto my will and my way. If you will open up your ears and you began to hear what thus said the Lord. So I believe in my spiritual mind that David heard the Lord and somebody in the house this morning you're going through a battle in your life and the Lord is speaking to your battle. But uh, you got to let go and let God have his way. Somebody working with a financial deficit and God has already shown you how to get out of your debt. I stopped by to tell you to hear what the Lord is saying. The Bible said you got to learn how to stand still and know that the Lord is in charge. Don't worry about your haters. They want to see you fall down. Worry about where you are in the, the Lord. So in the, my mind, I can see David on the, the battlefield. 
Saul with a bow and an arrow shooting at the Goliath but yet always missing. Have you ever noticed that sometimes your haters always miss and even when the, they hit us you got to be strong in the Lord. Do I have somebody? If you don't entertain your hater, your hater can never take you out. If you don't entertain the devil, the devil will never get a foothold in your life. So I see David out on the battlefield. They were coming at David on the left. They were coming at him on the, the right. Somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. Look like every time uh, you come out, that old devil put you right back in. When your son start acting right, then your daughter get out of order. Once you get your daughter stabilized, then your wife start talking crazy. Job say you sound like a crazy woman. She said, Job, the God that you serve has put sores all over your body. Job, the God that you serve has taken uh, our children uh, away, taken our wealth away. But I heard Job say, you sound like a crazy woman. I refuse to curse my God. Job said, naked, 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 I came into the world. Am I talking to you today? And naked, I am going to leave this world. So can you see David right now, working with all he had? Sometimes you got to work with the little and trust God for the much. So David went out to battle. Didn't have an armor bearer to carry his arm. Didn't have any armor to be carried. All David had was the word of God and five smooth stones. Do I have somebody? It's not always what you got in the, your pocket. But it's about what the Lord makes available for use. God can take a dirty, drunkard old man, clean him up and put him in the, the poor pit. Become one of the greatest bishops in the, this land. God can take a prostitute that has slept with a hundred me and calls her to be one of the greatest evangelists on this side of heaven. Is God all right? So watch David for a moment. David went out on the, the battlefield. The reason we lose the battle because oh ye of little faith, where is your faith? We'd be talking back to the Lord. Say, Lord, how can I take down the giant with five smooth stones? But I stopped to tell the church that if God said it, that sells it. What's impossible uh, with me is possible uh, with God. So their Saul was with the bow and the arrow, shooting down the little Philistine. But you got to get the big Philistine so that they will retreat back where they came from. That's the way you got to do your haters. Don't hate on your haters, but pray for your haters. Put them in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. So Saul kept shooting his bow and arrow. David picked up his stone. He slung his stone. Hit him on the first try. Did number two and three. Four, but on the fifth stone, the big 
giant fell over and died. Do I have somebody? You want the giant to die? You got to become a giant killer. You got to quit entertaining the your giant. You got to quit entertaining the your hater. You got to tell him get out of here. You don't live here no more. Is there anybody here that's staying on today? I'm not gonna let my haters get me down. You can talk about me. You can lie on me. You can try to kill me. But for God, I will die. And for God, I'm gonna live. Is there anybody here that your storm is right there? Over your house, speak to your storm. Call your storm out. It won't be long. You gon' look for me, and I'll be gone. Somebody say, where you going? I'm going there where haters can't go. I'm going there where liars can't go. I'm going there where thieves can't go. I'm going where the weary shall be, shall be at rest. I'm going where every day shall be Sunday. Sabbath will have no end. If the word of God has ministered to you. You're going through a period in your life where it looks like you have more haters than folk that love you. You need to come to the altar because there's something in you that ought not be in you that attracts that hater. You got to learn to separate yourself from those that don't believe in the same doctrine that you believe in. Will you trust God? Maybe you need a church home. We extend that privilege to you right now. Come as you are weary, wounded, and sad, or come as you are already built up in the Lord. But this is the recovery center where we come to be recovered from our sins. The Bible said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Come on in to the joy of the Lord. As the praise team come, don't let your haters keep you down. Make a declaration on today that you can't hate up in this camp no more. I'm on the Lord's side. God, I'm praying for my brother because I know he wants to do your will. And I'm praying for my sister because I know you want to set her free, set her free, set her free. I'm praying for the body of Christ Oh, you're gonna have your way. So if you're listening and you heard it real bad, don't worry, I can hear him say, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I pray. Haters. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, haters. When I pray. Praying for my friends. So now, cast all your cares on him. Why don't you cast your cares right now? Despite the pain you feel, he will come through. Praying for you.
sun's gonna shine behind your soul. Just be encouraged, cause I've been in that position too. Be encouraged, my sister and brother. If you've been feeling so lonely, trust him sometimes right now. you don't know where to go, what to do, and where to turn. But if you're listening and you want a way out, here is something you just ought to know. Know that I'm praying for you. And when I pray, things change. Know that I'm praying for you. And when I pray, things got to change. So now, cast all your cares on him. The Lord will free you. Despite the pain you feel, he will come through. I'm here to tell you today that I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I am praying for you. Praying for you. Now listen, things are going to get. Hold your head up. You gotta know that things are gonna get better. Hold your head up. Things are Hold gonna get better. Look unto the heat. Hold your head up. Hold your head up. Things are gonna get better. church praying. Understand that there is an active shooter at the Causeway Air Force Base and we have church members that have family there. They request us to pray for their family. Let us bow, O oh, wise and eternal master. O oh God, we're living in some turbulent times. We're living in a day and age where men have lost their zeal concerning you. 
And Lord, right now, we have trouble at Carswell Air Force Base. But we know that you're a God that sit high. You're a God that looks low. Right now, dear God, we ask that as we pray as a family, that you would watch over our members as well as their extended family. We pray now that you would not allow any hurt or harm to fall upon anyone that's in this particular situation. Father God, touch the shooter's mind and touch the heart. And let him know that lives can be taken and never returned here on earth. Let him know that whatever the situation is, that you are God that can work it out. While we're trying to figure life out, you've already worked it out. And so God, come in right now like we know you can. If it be your holy will, come in and take this negative, dear master, and create a positive out of it. Lord, we're believing right now, but we know that whatever your will is, you're going to let your will be done. And so, Lord, we thank you for the ones that came this morning. We thank you for the ones that made their way to the altar. We're believing that every need that was brought before you on today, that that need would be met. Now, Lord, restore our altar workers. Restore the virtue back into them that they have prayed into these, thy people. Restore the man of God. Restore our musicians. Restore our singles master. Restore the urshers. Restore the audio and the video ministry, dear God. Right now, come in, dear God. Restore the people of God and put us on one accord. We realize that when the church get on one accord, that haters cannot come up in here because the Holy Spirit will be too strong. So we thank you for change right now. We thank you for deliverance right now. We thank you for being our help, dear God, in our dark places, dear God. We thank you for being the hope master that we're standing firm on, looking for the great resurrection when you're going to call all of your children in. And so, Lord, bless this ministry. Bless it in a very special way. Lord, bless those that have joined us this morning by way of the internet. Our desire is that their lives have been changed and that they have prayed the prayer of redemption, that they have repented of their sins. Lord, we love you and we adore you. Continue to be who you are and all that you do in this ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord some love in this holy place.